My ex-husband showed up at my parents' house. I need you to pack up your stuff and leave right now. What? Despite my loss for words, my ex-husband continued. My wife is pregnant. Yes, your sister. Yes, my ex-husband. He had an affair with my sister and left me five years ago. I want to create a good environment for the baby. Unlike a single lady like you for the rest of my life, we can make better use of this house than you. You're infertile, so no one wants you. You know what I'm saying? Just stop thinking and get out of here. I sighed and shook my head. I can't. What? Oh, come on. You don't know who lives in this house right now. Immediately after, I saw a large figure appear from behind me. My husband turned blue and started shaking. Why? My name is Jane. I'm an office worker who turned 35 this year. Thankful of the fact that I am seem to be well respected within the company, I'm one of those who have risen up the ladder among my peers. I'm living a good life now, but there have been twists and turns up to this point. The biggest thing that happened in the last few years was the divorce. The cause was my ex-husband's infidelity. Five years ago, Joe, my husband at the time, eloped, and it turned out to be my own sister. She's always had a penchant for coveting my possessions, and she's very consistent on it. I'll give her that. But it was still out of the ordinary. At the time, Joe and I were co-workers. Joe was a soft-spoken, perceptive person. As a young man, I was attracted to that about Joe. Then Joe took a liking to me and we started dating. After a while of dating, I introduced Joe to my family. Since we were dating on the premise of marriage, we talked about how we wanted to make things right. I happened to be back at my parents' house at the time. The moment my sister saw Joe's face, I was so surprised that she let out a surprised voice. The reason was, my sister and Joe went to the same university, and they knew each other. After that, my sister and I and Joe often went shopping together. We had a lot of fun. We had a great time. We continued to socialize even after Joe and I were married. However, after a few times of the three of us, I began to feel more and more uncomfortable. We would get excited about topics that only Joe and my sister knew about. They started going out alone together in secret. You went out with my sister yesterday? I wish I could have gone with you. Oh yeah, maybe some other time. That made me kind of nervous. And then one day, I was invited to dinner by a colleague from the company where Joe and I work. I gladly accepted the invitation, but I got a shocking revelation. Joe was seen entering a hotel room, arm in arm with a woman who was not me. I asked my co-worker to describe the woman. It turned out to be my sister. I didn't want to believe it, but when my co-worker showed me a picture of her, I had to believe it. I asked my colleague to send me the photo data. I decided to question Joe that day. Hey, what's this all about? What? N no, no, this is... Joe, with his simpering attitude, was moping the whole time. You've been cheating on me this whole time, haven't you? You two made fun of me, right? Did you have fun? No matter what I asked, Joe didn't say anything. He just looked down. Joe disappeared the next day. When I woke up in the morning, Joe was nowhere to be found. I didn't think it was possible. I tried to call my sister, but she was disconnected. It wasn't until three days later, I found out that my sister and Joe were together. At the house where me and Joe were living, the divorce papers came. About the same time, I received an email from my sister. 
The email from my sister read, I will be happy with Joe. Just those words. Naturally, I couldn't accept that. But I didn't know where to go to protest. I couldn't get in touch with her. Furthermore, it seems that Joe had sent his resignation letter by mail to his employer. I had no more connections in any direction. I was at my wit's end, and finally decided to divorce him. And for a while after that, I couldn't get over it. I couldn't accept the idea of my own sister and my husband eloping. I just couldn't accept it. But I couldn't stay depressed forever. So I decided to take my anger and resentment out on my work. While I was working so hard, I could forget about Joe and my sister. And it worked. I was recognized for my contribution to the company. I was given a good position. Then I was blessed with good fortune. Five years have passed since my sister and Joe eloped. Life has been going well for me. Then one day, I had no work that day. I woke up later than usual, thinking of having my breakfast. And when I got up from the bed, I heard my phone on my bedside table. It was a phone call. I looked at the screen and saw a blocked call. Normally, I wouldn't answer it, but I answered it with all my might because I woke up from sleep. Yes, who's calling? Oh, Jane, it's been a long time. Hey, it's me, Joe. I'm glad you took my call and that you're still using this number. To my surprise, it was my ex-husband, Joe, who called me. I almost slid off the bed in surprise. What? Joe? Why? Why are you being so cold? Why? We were a couple once. I could at least call you. Joe, while laughing, said what was so funny. He acted as if nothing had happened. I remembered the anger I thought I had forgotten. What do you mean, a former couple? You've got to be kidding me. How dare you contact me just like that? What the hell do you want? Oh, come on. Calm down. You haven't changed a bit, have you? His easygoing tone irritates me even more. Perhaps sensing this, Joe finally got down to business. Well, yes, yes. You're living at your parents' home now, right? Why don't you pack up your stuff and move out right now? Because your sister and I have decided to move into that house. This doesn't make any sense to me at all anymore. I don't know what kind of thought processing he's going through. We got married, actually. We recently had a baby. We want to provide a good environment for her. Of course, you wouldn't say no, would you? I'm saying this out of the kindness of my heart. If you stay at home with your parents forever, you'll never be able to remarry. I suddenly got a headache. Please, don't be such an idiot. You're right, Joe. I'm back at my parents' house now. I don't know where the hell you got that information from, but I don't care. And of course, I would refuse. Why would I do that for you both? That I would give up my parents' house for you people? With that, Joe came back at me in a slightly harsh tone. He seemed to slightly take aback. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're 35 years old and infertile. I don't know how you can find someone to marry you. When Joe and I were married, I never got pregnant. I'm assuming that's what he meant by infertile. That's a disgusting thing to say. Is that all you have to say? Because I will never give you this house. And saying that, I just hung up. I didn't want to talk to Joe anymore. But still, it was too selfish. He had an affair, he eloped. And now, they want to take my house too. I hope they give up now, but I don't know what will happen next. A few days passed. I was busy at work that morning. I finally took a lunch break after 2 p.m. I went to my favorite restaurant near my office. I finished my lunch. When I entered the entrance of the building to go back to the office, I saw a familiar figure. No way! How could he be here? It was Joe. 
He had gained so much weight over the past five years. But the way he stood there was unmistakably Joe. I immediately tried to hide. But before I could do so, he saw me. Joe was saying, Oh, finally. He called out at me, and he came fluttering toward me. Oh, there you are. I waited long, you know. So, to continue our conversation from the other day, when can you leave? I'd like you to leave by next month if possible. But I told you no to that talk. And the nerve for you coming all the way to my office. Get the hell out of here. Joe has a smile on his face, but he looks annoyed and continues to talk. You're talking like that again. I don't see why you, Jane, a single woman, should have to live in that house. We'd rather have it with our unborn child. Wouldn't it be better if she lived there? With her mother and father? Am I wrong? You're not even listening. No matter how hard I try to talk him out of it, he will eat me up. Joe kind of terrified me. You're being a little pushy, aren't you? No matter how much you ask, what you're asking is impossible. You had an affair and eloped on your own. Why can't you go live somewhere else? When I said this, Joe wrinkled his face. He raised his voice. You listen up. The only reason I had the affair in the first place was because you were infertile. If you had been able to give me a child, I wouldn't have had an affair. It's all your fault. So take responsibility and at least give us a place where we can live. I can't even begin to fathom it. Saying it's my fault he had an affair? It's too much to take the blame. Are you serious right now? I've got work to do. I have to go. Joe was still trying to say something, but he finally seemed to notice the stairs around him. He told me to remember that, and he left the entrance. Joe finally gave up on me. That's what I thought, but I was reminded that I was naive. A week after, Joe came to my office, after work was over. I was relaxing at home, watching TV. Suddenly, the intercom rang. I wasn't expecting anyone to come to visit, so I got up. I decided to look into the intercom monitor anyway. Standing there were Joe and my sister. I've really had enough of this. I rushed to the front door and opened it vigorously. Oh, Jane. Did you get your packing done? I didn't hear anything from you, so I came all the way here in person. Wow, long time no see, sis. You heard from Joe, didn't you? We're having a baby. You know, I'll take care of it when it's born. All I could do was to sigh in spite of all this. What's the matter? Are you tired? Well, I don't really care anyway. But listen to me. It's great that we're having a baby, but... But we don't have the money. So we're going to have to live here, okay? My sister says so with a superior look in her eyes. Joe further opens his mouth. Yeah, so I recently realized that this house is not yours. Are your parents home? Let me talk to them. It's your mother and father's first grandchild. I bet they'll accept us, right? I couldn't help but laugh when he said that. I didn't think that he didn't know about this. What are you laughing at? You're not very nice. Hurry up and get mom and dad out. Huh? Are you serious that you didn't know? Mom and dad are gone. Yeah, my parents don't live in this house anymore. After you, Joe, and I divorced and I moved back home, they gave me this house as a tidy gift. And now they are living a retired life in the countryside on my mother's side. So I am the owner of this house. When I confronted them with this fact, both my sister and Joe's eyes widened. Understand? This house is my house, so I have the right to make all the decisions. I said it so clearly, but Joe still insists. Well, okay then. Jane can live in this house. Let's live together, okay? Let's be friends again, just the three of us, just like before. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a great idea. You won't be alone in such a big house. It must be so lonely to live alone, right? We'll all be happy if we live together. Another outrageous idea. 
I was about to argue with them. I was about to open my mouth. When suddenly... Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so loud. But look, it's my ex-husband and my sister that I told you about. It was my now husband who approached me. And in his arms is our daughter. My husband mumbled. I see. He greeted Joe and my sister in confusion. Hi. Good evening. I'm Jane's husband. This is our daughter. Isn't she cute? Both Joe and my sister couldn't close their mouths. They must be very surprised. To tell you the truth, I have already remarried. About a year after Joe and I divorced, I met my current husband through a friend. Things went smoothly. We got married less than six months after we started dating. Soon after, I became pregnant with our daughter. Now I work and am a housewife at the same time. My husband helps me with housework and childcare, so I wouldn't neglect my work in our home, and I have been able to get a promotion. I think you get the idea now. There's nothing you can do. You can't take advantage of me at all. My husband, my daughter, and I. We're a family, and we get along just fine. What is this, Jane? You're not infertile? No way, that's a lie. Joe starts to question. What the hell? You're my sister and you're married to someone so handsome? I can't believe you're married. It's not fair. It's not fair. Kate began to stamp her feet as she said that. My husband looked down at her coldly and said, That's the way it is. Please leave us alone. If you ever come near our family again, I will call the police. Is that clear? The word police and the force of my husband's words pushed them over the edge. Joe and my sister turned blue in the face and immediately left. After that, Joe and my sister never appeared in front of me again. They were in financial trouble. They snuggled up at Joe's side of the family. But they found out about what they did five years ago. And they were not impressed. So they turned them down early. No wonder. And this is what I heard from a mutual friend of ours. Joe was having an affair again without fail. They are currently in the middle of a divorce. The reason for this is also surprising. As a matter of fact, my sister was never pregnant. She was lying to get back home somehow. And apparently, Joe didn't know about that. That she wasn't really pregnant. He was also deceived. Of course, a lie like that was easily exposed. He eloped with my sister because he wanted a child. If she was impregnant, then he didn't need her anymore. Joe had been having affairs because he wants children. However, in the future, Joe will never be able to have children. The probability that Joe is infertile. I'm not a doctor, so I can't say for sure. But given the circumstances, it's extremely likely. I wonder when Joe will realize this. Or will he finally find out? Either way, it's none of my business anymore. And then one day, I received a letter from Joe at home. I was dubious, so I decided to check it with my husband just to be sure. The letter said that he went to the hospital for a checkup and was diagnosed as being incapable of having children and that he regretted what he did. He regretted eloping with my sister five years ago and that he wanted to try it with me again. Naturally, I ignored the letter. My husband tore the letter to shreds in a fit of anger. He must have given up when he didn't receive a reply or maybe he didn't expect a reply from the beginning. I never received another letter from Joe. He was a selfish and unfulfilled man to the very end. I should just forget about such a man and live life happily. I now live with my kind and caring husband, with a kind and caring husband and a precious daughter in the prime of her life. I would do anything to preserve this happiness that I have finally found. That's what I promised myself. My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. My husband shouted these words in front of the entire family. What a despicable man trying to corner me mentally even at a time like this. 
As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up from their seats. Then everyone bowed to me and silently left the room. W why A certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. My name is Sarah, a 40-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband James for five years. We met at a group blind date. At that time, I was struggling to find a partner, so I attended the blind date when a friend invited me. James was the center of attention among the men, engaging in various conversations and making everyone laugh when he spoke. I was attracted to his cheerful personality. Then when we changed seats and ended up next to each other, we discovered that we both really loved coffee, and we decided to go to a cafe together, which led us to meeting one-on-one. -on -one. That was the beginning of him inviting me out for meals and cafe visits, and we started dating and eventually became a couple. I had so much fun spending time with them, and I became increasingly attracted to him. About a year after we started dating, he proposed to me and we decided to get married. I want you to be a housewife once we're married. I quit my job at the company I was working for and became a full-time housewife, just as he requested. Since then, I've been working hard on housework to support James. But soon after getting married, I began to regret it as he turned out to be quite the chauvinist. Hey, the ironing on my dress shirt isn't good enough. He said that, but looking at the shirt on the hanger, I honestly couldn't tell what was wrong with it. But since he said to redo it, I hurriedly re-ironed it while he ate breakfast. As I finished and hung it on the hanger, he left his dirty dishes and went to the bathroom. I was quite surprised by his behavior at this point. It was because he was a completely different person from the kind man he was before we got married. Well, I'm off. Have a good day. After seeing my husband off to work, I would always feel completely drained. Being together felt suffocating. Is this okay for newlyweds? I was soon overwhelmed with such anxiety after getting married. But still, I thought I should at least try married life for a year. I might have my own shortcomings as well. With that in mind, I tried to improve what I could. But James' attitude remained the same. You really are a useless wife. Why can't you do what I tell you? He relentlessly berated me like that. Despite it all, I continued with our married life for at least a year. One of the reasons I couldn't bring myself to divorce was my mother-in-law, Emma. Thank you, Sarah, for always helping out. It's such a relief having you here. Oh, don't mention it. Please don't hesitate to ask for anything. Feel free to tell me anything. Emma lived near us, and she had been living alone since her husband passed away. But recently, she had been struggling with housework because of her bad legs. So during the day, I would go to her house and help out as much as I could. From the very beginning of our marriage, she had been very kind to me, treating me like her own daughter. Our only child is James. We really wanted a daughter, too. That's why I'm so happy to have such a wonderful girl like you, Sarah, as my daughter-in-law. Oh, Emma. Having been told such things by her, it was difficult for me to talk to her about James' chauvinistic behavior, and I couldn't bring myself to divorce him, fearing it would make her sad. Amidst all this, something happened that made it even harder for me to divorce. What? Your mom was taken to the hospital? Yeah, so please go see her in the hospital. James told me that, and I rushed to the hospital. When I entered the hospital room, I saw her lying on the bed. Aw, oh, Sarah, you came. Emma, are you alright? I'm sorry for making you worry. She had collapsed from a stroke while shopping and had been taken to the hospital by ambulance. I guess I'm getting old. You never know what might happen. 
She said this with a worried expression. It was painful for me to see her like that. A few hours later, after finishing work, James arrived at the hospital. Mom, are you okay? Ah, James, I'm sorry for worrying you. I'm fine. No, but you just collapsed out of the blue. Of course I'm worried. After making a worried face, James seemed to have a sudden idea and said this. Oh, I know. When you're discharged, Mom, let's live together. What? That way we can take care of you and if something happens, we can help you right away. I was shocked. Normally, you would first consult with your wife, me in this case, and propose the idea of living together to her after deciding together. But without involving me, he immediately brought up the idea of living together with this mother. It's as if I have no right to voice my opinion. If my mother-in-law agreed, I wouldn't be able to refuse. Well, I am worried about her and I don't mind living together, but I still wanted him to talk to me about it beforehand. Because he suddenly brought it up, it made her uncomfortable. But for Sarah, living with her mother-in-law could be difficult. When she said that, I almost told her, oh no, but James interrupted. No, 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 she doesn't mind at all. In fact, she's terrible at housework, so you should teach her. My mother-in-law was surprised by his remark. James, what are you talking about? Sarah is doing just fine. She's been a great help at my house too. As she defended me, James looked annoyed. Uh, well, as long as both of you are happy. Sarah, you're okay with living together, right? Uh, sure. Then as soon as mom is discharged, we'll move in together. James made the decision to live together in her house rather forcibly. A week later, when my mother-in-law was discharged, James and I terminated our rental apartment lease and moved in with her. Sarah, I look forward to living with you from today on. Same here. She greeted us warmly and our life together began in a peaceful way. I tried my best not to burden her with housework and took the initiative to do it myself, but she insisted on doing simple chores saying that she would become unhealthy if she didn't move. We cooked together and she taught me various recipes. Her cooking was truly delicious and I learned a lot. James seemed satisfied with the clean house and delicious meals. At first, I was unsure about how living together would work, but I started to think that it might be better for me. As a housewife living with just my husband, James was the only person I talked to. But having Emma around gave me someone to talk to during the day, which became a source of mental support for me. She would also step in when James was about to complain about something and take my side. When she scolded him, he would stop complaining, which was truly a blessing. In the blink of an eye, four years passed since we started living together. While I still had my share of complaints about my husband, I got along very well with my mother-in-law, so I didn't think much about divorce. But just when I thought things had finally settled down, James started to show even more unreasonable behavior. You're terrible at managing the household finances. What? You're spending too much on food. No, I think it's an average amount. No, it's too much. That's why I've decided to give you less money. What? I used to give you $370 for food expenses for the three of us, but starting this month, it's $170. What? That's not enough. It's more than enough. You just have to figure it out. But we won't be able to get enough nutrition and we won't be able to eat satisfying amounts of food. Figuring that out is the job of a full-time housewife. James suddenly made such an unreasonable demand and he really only gave us $170 a month. 
There's no way we can cover the food expenses for three people with $170. I also want to make sure my mother-in-law gets nutritious meals too. But James wouldn't listen at all and he didn't give us any more money. So for now, I did my best to make nutritious meals within the $170 budget and I had to be incredibly creative. I bought large quantities of meat at wholesale supermarkets, divided them into smaller portions and froze them. I looked for discount vegetable stores and stocked up and I froze what could be frozen right away. I stopped buying all the snacks we used to buy and switched to cheaper bread. And I didn't forget to be inventive with the menu. I generally bulked up meat dishes with vegetables and tofu. I made sure to prepare soup almost every time so that we could fill our stomachs even with a small number of dishes. I think I'm doing really well. Emma also said, I know that you're trying to save money, but it's amazing that you can still make such delicious meals. And she apologized. I'm sorry that James is saying such outrageous things. Until now, if I warned him, he would stop doing unreasonable things, but this time he won't listen to me no matter what I say. So he wouldn't even listen to you. Although we're managing somehow now, I don't know how long we can keep living like this. Both Emma and I were quite worn out from being at the mercy of James' unreasonableness. And then my husband made another unbelievable remark. It looks like you can live comfortably with just $170. So let's make it $55 starting this month. What? Are you out of your mind? That's impossible. Oh, you haven't changed at all. It's not about whether you can or can't. It's about doing it. If not, I won't even give you $55. No. It's already so difficult and now he wants us to live on half the food budget? I felt like I was going crazy. But he really only gave us $55 a month. Fortunately, he started working more overtime and going out for drinks more often, so it was fine if I just prepared meals for my mother-in-law and myself, even if the menu was modest. But we definitely didn't have enough nutrition, so I went to several supermarkets to find where meat was on sale and bought meals with half-price stickers on. Of course, I relied on the meat from the wholesale supermarket, but I had to buy beef and ground pork at a regular supermarket. Shopping by train was a waste of money, so I rode my bicycle around to stores. I think I really made a tremendous effort. But even in the midst of all that, my husband made another unbelievable remark. I don't get why I have to pay for utilities when I'm hardly ever home. My mom's name is still on the bill, so from now on, I'm not paying for utilities. I really couldn't take it anymore. That's not right. We're living in your mother's house, aren't we? You use the bath and you often fall asleep with the lights on when you come home late at night. If anything, your mom and I use less electricity. I angrily retorted, but my husband predictably got upset. Who do you think is feeding you? Have you forgotten that I'm providing the money for food? It's just $55 that he's giving us. What's with his attitude? That was my honest thought, but if we lost that $55, we would be the ones in trouble. Anyway, I'm not going to pay for utilities anymore. In the end, James forcibly decided on that as well. Emma and I were at our wit's end. Well, I can pay for utilities and such with my pension. Oh, Emma, is there any way to break through this situation? In the midst of this, I came across some information. I thought maybe I could do this too. So I immediately put it into action. About half a year passed since then. 
Emma and I were somehow getting by with our frugal lifestyle when one day she suddenly fell ill and passed away. I was devastated. I couldn't believe that my mother-in-law, who was my emotional support, was gone. Even my husband was shocked. I can't believe my mom passed away. The wake began the next day and relatives and friends of Emma attended. But at this wake, James caused an unbelievable incident. It was about the food served at the wake. Everyone was eating and talking while thinking of my mother-in-law. In the midst of that, my husband, perhaps feeling tipsy from the alcohol, suddenly made an unthinkable remark. My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. Don't ever set foot in my house again. James shouted these words in front of all the relatives. I was at a loss for words. We hardly spoke to each other and the time we spent together had decreased. The relationship between my mother-in-law and my husband had always been incompatible. But why would he blame me like this at such an occasion? He's really the worst man to try to corner me mentally even at a time like this. As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up. They all bowed to me and silently left. I was surprised. During the wake, all the relatives had left. James looked with wide eyes as the relatives left. W w why Then a certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. James, all the relatives know what you've been doing up to now. What? Who are you? I'm a lawyer who was commissioned by your mother. A lawyer? What do you want? Your mother left a will. I'll read it all out loud as it's written here. The lawyer read Emma's will in front of my husband and me. We were surprised at the contents. My mother-in-law had recorded the fact that my husband only gave us $55 per month for food expenses and didn't pay for utilities. She also recorded that he repeatedly made morally harassing remarks to me and sent these records to the relatives. The relatives, knowing everything, had left in disgust after hearing my husband's words. And my mother-in-law had even more shocking news for me. The will continued, and it mentioned his affair. It seemed that my mother-in-law had hired a private detective to investigate. The lawyer who had received the investigation results from Emma showed them to us. There were photos of James entering a hotel with his mistress looking affectionate. My husband turned pale upon seeing the photos. You want to tell me what this is all about? N no, this, this is, um, it's, it's not what it looks like. What is it then? You were having an affair. Well, that's, um... James was extremely flustered. He desperately tried to make excuses, but there was no escape with so much evidence. It seemed that James was having an affair with a junior at work. The reason he had reduced the money he gave to us was that he wanted to save money to enjoy his time with his mistress even more. Unbelievable. We're getting a divorce. You be paying me compensation. I'll also claim compensation for the moral harassment, not just the affair. No. James cried and apologized, but I absolutely did not want to forgive him. You even made the relatives leave. You're really hopeless. Don't you dare attend the funeral tomorrow. If you're there, we won't be able to properly send off your mom. Why don't you go back to your mistress now and discuss how to pay the compensation? When I said that, my husband left the scene with a frightened look. The next day, knowing that my husband wouldn't be attending, the relatives came to my mother-in-law's funeral, feeling relieved. We all said our goodbyes together. After that, I divorced my husband and claimed compensation from his mistress. James had to pay a total of $53,000 for moral harassment and the affair, while the mistress had to pay $37,000.
The affair became known at their workplace, and the mistress couldn't bear the cold stares and resigned. As long as her parents paid the compensation on her behalf, I didn't care if she quit her job or not. Since my ex-husband had to pay more compensation than his mistress and had no savings, he couldn't quit his job and had to work with a heavy burden on his shoulders. By the way, when my ex-husband started to withhold money unreasonably, I had actually gotten information about a side job and started doing it. Thanks to working diligently, by the time I divorced my ex, I was earning about $900 per month. So now I'm thinking of working part-time while continuing my side job to earn enough income to live on my own. In any case, it was a relief that we were able to hold my mother-in-law's funeral properly and also punish my ex-husband. From now on, I plan to forget about my terrible ex-husband and start a new life. Thank you for watching until the end.